Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, and I'm really thrilled that you took the time to watch our service today. It was Thanksgiving week, and in the midst of the chaos that is the COVID crisis this year, I hope that you were able to take some time to give thanks to God for the blessings in your life. As we begin to look forward in the calendar, this is also the first Sunday of Advent, which means the beginning of a brand new Christian year, and we look forward to the coming of Christ. As always, we have a lot of announcements, a lot of things going on in the life of the church. Just this past Sunday, I gave a challenge to the church to um, do some things that would make a difference right here in our community over the next few weeks in accordance with Jesus' scripture in which he proclaims that we need to care for the least of these. Well, the first thing that I asked us to do was to make a donation to street turkeys to help feed the hungry and the thirsty. And I can tell you that we have reached our $10,000 goal. So way to go, everybody. Fantastic job. This coming week, we're going to be welcoming the stranger. And how we're going to do that is supporting children who feel like strangers in a strange home. People who are supported by the Methodist Home for Children. I'm inviting you to participate in our Angel Tree program this season of Christmas. And end up adopting a family, if you will, where you can donate gifts and toys to children who wouldn't have a Christmas otherwise. So if you'll just simply go on our e-blast or, or on social media and find the link to the Angel Tree program so that you can make a donation, so that you can purchase some gifts to help kids that are being helped through the Methodist Home for Children. In coming weeks, we're going to be looking for ways to help the sick, the naked, and those that are in prison. So we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. But this afternoon, I invite you to come by the church between 3.30 and 5.30 and pick up an Advent packet. These are, have activities for everybody in the family. Um, whether you're a single couple or you have children at home, there is something in here that you can do that will help prepare you for the season of Christmas, which is coming up very soon. And in fact, tonight at 4 o'clock, we invite you to come out to the gravel lots where our Worship on the Water music team is going to be playing your favorite Christmas hymns. And you can just stay in your car, turn on the FM transmitter to 87.7, and sing along in the car with our Worship on the Water music team as we sing some of those great Christmas hymns that we look forward to each and every year. So come by, pick up your packet at 3.30, and then head over to the gravel lots at 4 in order to sing the Christmas hymns. Well, that's the end of our announcement, so I now invite you to pick up your phone and text one of your friends. May the peace of Christ be with you. Thanks. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the world began to be, He is Alpha and Omega. He the source, the ending he of the things that are and have been, and the future you shall see, evermore and evermore. I invite you to bow your heads in prayer. Father, let your hope arise in our hearts this day. There's been so much anxiety and discouragement this year. Lift our eyes up to see that you alone are where our hope comes from. Give us the grace we need to wrap up this year joyfully. We invite your spirit into this beautiful Advent season. Renew our sense of holy anticipation. Let us be those who are waiting eagerly for Jesus to come again. More than anything, we ask that you be glorified in this season of expectation. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isaiah 60, 2-3 For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and His glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to the light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light, send, may the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Will you pray with me? Gracious God, help us to pay attention to the many ways in which you enrich our lives. It's become far too easy for us to focus on the negative. We seem trapped in its spidery strands. Today we celebrate the beginning of the season of Advent, the coming of the Holy One. But before we can begin the celebration, we have to acknowledge where we have fallen short. We need to change our attitudes of defiance into visions of cooperation. Be with our families, friends, and neighbors who suffer from illness and sorrow, loneliness, marginalization, abuse, and fear. Bring healing and peace to their lives and their souls. Be with our families, our friends, and neighbors who are experiencing great joy and happiness as well. May their spirits rejoice in these good moments and in your great gifts as we offer up the names to, to you now of those that are on our hearts. Forgive us, merciful God, when we spend so much time looking for the scary things in life. Focus our attention on ways in which we can be of service with whatever time we may have. Forgive us when we seek the darkness of anger and fear and turn our backs on the light of possibility and peace. Open our hearts once again to your redeeming love and your transforming peace. For we ask these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, Jesus Christ our Lord, who said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite you to continue to give thanks to God by sharing in the blessings that he has given to you. I invite you to give to the church. And you can do so by sending a check to Post Office Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, 28480 or go to rightsvilleumc.org, our website, and click on the Giving tab. You can also give through the app if you have that on your phone. A king of glory comes, a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is this King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promise to the ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people curing their illness. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Saint then of David, son, our Savior and brother. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices.
I got a question for all of the kids out there today. I want you to think back to the beginning of school. I know it was weird this year. Some of us were going every day. Some of us weren't. Some of us were staying at home, doing it virtually. Um, and then for a while, we, we started going to school like two days a week, right? Um, depending on what school you go to. So anyway, I, I want you to go back to right before school started. And I want you to think about what did you do to get ready for school? Not that morning in terms of getting your lunch together and, you know, brushing your teeth and getting your clothes on and all that. But I mean, what did you do to get prepared for the year? Did you do anything special? Did you go shopping for new clothes? Did you find out who your teacher was? Did you go get new pencils and pens and notebooks? Maybe even a new backpack? Did you get some new school supplies so that you would be prepared, so that you would be ready for the new year? Well, guess what? Today is the beginning of the new year in the Christian calendar. And there are things that we do to prepare for Jesus coming. I bet you know some of the things that we do to prepare for Jesus coming. Just like you prepare for a new school year, we prepare for a new year in which we celebrate Jesus. And what are some of the things that you do at your home to help get prepared for Jesus coming? What do you do to get prepared for Christmas? Do you put up a Christmas tree? Do you put out other decorations? Do you go buy gifts? Do you wrap the gifts? Do you put out a, a nativity set? Um, what else do you do to get ready for Christmas, to get ready for Jesus coming? Well, Jesus asks us not only to, to decorate our homes, but to decorate our hearts. What does that mean? It means to get ready on the inside, to get prepared for Jesus coming. How can we be prepared for Jesus coming on the inside in our hearts? Well, we can be praying, we can be thinking about Jesus, we can be nice to one another, we can do all kinds of things to get our hearts prepared. Begin to share with one another, to love one another, to share the good news of Jesus with others, with our friends, with our family. That's how we get prepared on the inside. We can live expectantly with hope instead of worried and afraid. That's what it means to get ready for Jesus coming. That's what it means to get prepared for a new year when we start to talk about the Christian year. So I invite you this day to think about the ways that you're getting ready for Christmas on the outside by decorating your home, but also on the inside by getting ready in your heart, getting ready to receive Jesus once again. Will you pray with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for this time to get prepared, the season of Advent. Lord, prepare our hearts and prepare our minds so that we'll be ready for Jesus coming. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so glad you're here with us. Every once in a while, I'll hear someone comment about how amazing it is that preachers from several mainline churches preach from, from the same scripture passage on a given Sunday. While it could be that they're using the same theme or that the Holy Spirit led them all in the same direction, it probably is more likely that they are all following the Revised Common Lectionary and that most, most mainline churches do follow that. Our passage this morning is from the Revised Common Lectionary passage for the first Sunday of Advent.
In it, we hear Jesus' teaching about his second coming, a day that all Christians think about as we hear about his first coming. We come to his time and to the theme of hope. During the season of Advent, we enter a time of spiritual preparation. We are challenged to be people of hope and endurance, of strong faith, seeing just how very much we need what Jesus brought into this world many years ago. We need to draw close to Jesus. So listen now as we read one of the apocalyptic in time passages from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 26 to 33. Jesus said, Then we will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he is near at the very door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come, not the angels in heaven and not the Son. Only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. These are days when we clarify what is worthy, a worthy challenge, from what is a waste of time and energy as we regroup as a church family bent on sharing the love of Christ in this world. There are so many things that can steal our time, our enthusiasm, our passion, our resources, and even our confidence in God. Maybe all the more so in this year of 2020, for we may have questioned God or had times when we were not sure if the hope we have in Christ would see us through. There are two important considerations today. One, notice the difference between being anxious with worry and fear and being watchful, alert, and expectant. And two, discern what is worthy of your time as a Christian. So we begin with this question, what is keeping you up at night? Do you lie in bed worrying about things? When the time comes that everyone else in your household and probably on your street are all safely tucked in and sleeping away, do you toss and turn your mind unable to shake things off and let you get some rest? Are you worrying about your job, your financial security, what someone said to you or what they think of you? Are you worried about your children or how you're going to handle a challenge the next day? Is it the expectation of Christmas coming that has you losing sleep over all the things that you think you should do. Worry and anxiety are good when it motivates us to be safe, to be better people, to accomplish our responsibilities, but many of us go way beyond that level of worry. It's more like we obsess. We can't let go. We fret. 
It was not that many years ago that a remarkable number of people did much less in the way of preparation for Christmas, but they spent so much time trying to discern the secrets of the apocalyptic writings in the Bible. The passages that speak of end times, of Jesus coming back, of the world as we know it coming to an end, the end of an age. Maybe you've spent some time on these things too. The sad truth is that it doesn't get anyone any real answers. Jesus tells us plainly that only our Heavenly Father knows. And that's really important, and I want to explain to you why. There's a reason we don't spend hours and hours exploring these things. And I can give you a good example. Any conscientious parent can tell you that there are age-appropriate things that we do for our children, and there are other things we don't do because children must first master the beginnings before they move on to more advanced activities. If you use the minutes and the energy of a two-year-old and what they have to pay attention, if you use that to teach abstract ideas to them like reading and mathematics, there are two things wrong. First, you took time to do something the child is not capable of doing yet. And second, you failed to spend time doing the very things the child should be doing. There's both commission and omission. So if a child needs to learn the concept of putting things inside and taking them out, but you spend time on letters and numbers, which is way too advanced for a two-year-old, the child's lost out twice. On the other hand, if you teach the age-appropriate basics, then your foundation for the child is going to help him or her learn best. Parents, there is hope for the two-year-olds. This is true for us as Christians, too. If we spend our time and our efforts trying to decipher when Jesus is coming back, instead of spending our time learning to live and think and be like Jesus, we miss out twice. We won't decipher what it is that Jesus tells us is not for us to know, and we will have missed out on so many opportunities to grow as faithful disciples of Jesus and share his love in this world. Hopefully, we know that. Hopefully, we do. If we stay awake tossing and turning and worrying about things rather than turning them over to God and trusting in his guidance, we will miss out on learning to trust and to hear God while we try futilely to solve all of our challenges ourselves. Let go and let God. If we spend all of our days of Advent being so busy with fleeting activities that we miss out on true spiritual blessing of seeing how Jesus comes to us, then we have truly lost a precious treasure. At the end of the season, we take everything down and we put it all away, don't we? How did we grow? How did we experience God's love and God's presence? Jesus said, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Set aside time, friends. Set aside time to pay attention and to share what you learn with others. Be watchful and alert for ways to receive God's love and to share it with others. These are true gifts. Seeing, learning, 
understanding. Be able to give to others from an abundance of love and grace within you. Be able to sleep peacefully because you have given your cares to God and you have the gift of hope. Yes, as Christians, we trust that one day Jesus will come in the clouds with great power and glory. We know to live as watchful people, but not as obsessed people. We know that God has a purpose for each of us, for our lives, and it is enough to tend to that mission and to bring glory to God. Showing your faith and spiritual peace during this pandemic is an especially worthy challenge. Knowing in your heart of hearts that you look forward to the day when you can meet Jesus face to face, either on this earth or in heaven, is a sign of your trust in God. You don't need to obsess or wring your hands with worry because we know the end of the story. We know that Christians who have gone before us are now part of the church triumphant. But even they do not know when the second coming will be. Like us, they wait with expectant hearts. Several months ago, there was a story in our local newspaper about a woman by the name of Bertha Todd. She was part of the New Hanover school system, and she had won so many awards, I could, couldn't begin to list them all. But Bertha Todd had as her goal bringing some truth to the history books for our Wilmington area. She wanted to advocate for social justice for racial justice and human rights. You may know her story much better than I do. What spoke deeply to me was her description of being willing to work on the long game to achieve incremental changes. She used her role to provide light along the path, not to blind pilgrims who were trying to travel forward. I wonder if we can think of that fig tree starting to put forth its leaves, as Jesus described, and see the growth and the changes that we have witnessed this year. I wonder if we can reflect on the rhetoric, the anxiety, the worry, the fear, the visions, the dreams, the peace offerings and promises that we see along our path that brings us all to be more like Jesus. What keeps you up at night? Let go of all those things that get between you and God in these coming weeks. Let go of things that weigh your spirit down and embrace the freedom and the joy and the hope that comes to you in this beautiful season of Advent. Will you pray with me? God of grace, thank you for setting us free. Thank you for reminding us that you are with us. Thank you for the love that grows within each of your children. Give us eyes to see. Fill our hearts with hope. Through Jesus we pray. Amen.
Friends, let us go forth in this Advent season, this time of hope, and to welcome the ways that Jesus gives us hope. Amen.